Now, financial markets are betting that the Bank of England could more than double interest rates by May next year as concern mounts about further rises in UK inflation. The shift in expectations which suggests interest rates could reach 4% in May, compared with 1.75% today, are among the biggest swings in recent years, fuelled by those ever-rising inflation court forecasts, not least due to soaring energy prices. The costs of government borrowing are up by more than one percentage point in a single month. That's the sharpest increase since the early 1990s. Well, Justin Urquhart Stewart is still with me. Justin, you are very much an expert in financial markets. We often talk about many things here on the money. Important that you and I focus on this moment. What's happening in the money markets, the gilt market, the market for government debt that GB News viewers and listeners should yep. care about? Right. The government debt, bear in mind, is, is actually the government being able to have that balance between what it's, what, what it's getting in and what it's spending. And therefore, it's running an overdraft. How does it fund it? Goes to the market to do so. And it does so by selling it, well, to actually to overseas investors who like Britain, yeah. uh, some of the big institutions doing that, um, and also to uh, actually itself yeah. with quantitative easing, this rather perverse mechanism they've actually got. Now, government debt has always been funded, whereby you actually get a level of return, you get a coupon, sort of like mm. a dividend twice mm. a year, and so you, you it's a very, it seems to be a solid return mm. coming through. However... Uh, but about 15 years ago, one G. Brown Esquire persuaded Mr. Blair that it actually a good idea. Actually, we start actually having some, maybe, why don't we do, uh, just having some index linked debt? Linked well, to inflation, then. Linked to inflation. Yeah. Well, inflation's been at uh, 2%, 3%. Mm. Now, potentially 14, 15, 18%. And the government's got to pay. That extra interest. Absolutely. So, uh, how much was, uh, are we paying for this? Well, round about last year, it's been round about between 45 and 50 billion a year. So, that's roughly what we spend on defence exactly. in debt interest. Yeah. Money down the drain. Yeah, just gone. Yeah. Yeah. And so, uh, you, sit, you sit there and think about, hang on, that's all the, the Navy, the Army, yeah. the Air Force, just on overdrive. But that's going up sharply that's now. A, now, we actually look at the calculation. Look, but this year is likely to be close to 100. Yeah, One, astonishing. That's Bigger on than the education interest. budget. On debt interest. Yes. On debt interest. And there you are. You're constantly locked in a proportion That's of this. right. Actually going so in on we, inflation. A lot of people say, I often hear this in, in pubs, actually. People talk to me, oh, Liam, don't worry about the national debt. We can just, inf it, you know, a bit of inflation and it disappears. But when the debt itself is index linked, yep. inflation makes the debt worse yep. because you have to service the debt with that inflation baked in. OK, that's the fiscal picture. Now let's bring it on to what that really means for individuals. The Bank of England sets the interest rate, yeah. right? And obviously we focused on that. They have six successive interest rate rises now, 1.75%. Yep. But you and I know that what really matters is the interest rate in the market. The Bank of England sets the minimum benchmark, but the interest rate in the market depends what your mortgage rate is when you have to refix your mortgage, what your interest rate is on your credit card, your other unsecured loans, your car loans, loans to get school uniforms, whatever it is. What's going to happen? Well, what's going to happen there is actually, do those lenders actually want to lend? They've been squeezed over the past few years because of capital. They remember the banking crisis a few years back, and so they want to repeat that. So therefore, will we going to lend? Well, we'll lend, but it will be a higher cost. Yeah, yeah. So the cost of debt's going up for everybody. Yeah. So what looked like quite a cheap mortgage will now start to look more expensive. And the rules around it will start getting difficult as well. Again, we come back to this issue. How do you manage your debt? Mm -hmm. If you don't know, actually, how you're going to pay this off, you suddenly realise, actually, the cost of this debt suddenly gone up. Mm -hmm. Very soon, potentially doubling. Mm -hmm. Imagine doubling your cost mm -hmm. of your debt every month. And now, add to that what's happening with the gas bill, uh, bill as well. Mm -hmm. um, and this is actually going to cause a financial crisis for many people. And this needs to be taken very seriously. So here we are, two you know, card-carrying financial nerds. That's what we are. We look at things like the gilt market, the, the broader money market, Markets. This seems irrelevant to most people. It's the kind of stuff you read in, in the Financial Times, for instance. But it really imposes on real people's lives. Now, yesterday we had an excellent financial commentator, Paula John. Oh, yeah. She was on and she was saying maybe people can consolidate their debts. If you've got lots of different debts, oh. you can one company can consolidate them. You have a lower outgoing each month, but you pay that outgoing for longer. Oh. You have to be careful with those consolidation lo loans, though, sometimes, don't you? But the, the main thing is to just not stick your head in the sand. Do something about it. Yeah, I do. good old-fashioned financial planning. If you were setting up a business, you'd have a business plan. Actually lay out what's going to happen, how much capital you need, how much you're going to spend, do you need to borrow it. 
when it comes to our personal finances mm. for our family, we don't do any of that. Yeah. It's assumed you sort of understand it. You, we don't. We don't teach it. Now, if we actually sat down and said, now, what do I need to invest? What do I need to have a return? Then we can teach people about, well, you need some guilt because that's going to give you a return over time. You're going to have to have uh, equities and you'll be in a property as well. You have a range of different asset classes which will give you an average return. And during times of high inflation, you'll have some things which will give you even return during that. Mm. But no one knows the future. So you have to have a balance of them all, but planning for the future, that you can do. How much more cost you got? How many kids are you going to have? Do you have to actually manage that mortgage? Can you pay that mortgage off? Mm. And all those variabilities. It's not easy, but when you're doing it, when you're blindfolded, because we mm. didn't tell people what to do, that's just dumb of uh, us. And the that's the part of our industry as much as anything else. And the main message here is, you, know, you and I are looking at the financial markets, we're looking at the money markets, and it's pretty clear that Whatever the Bank of England does, borrowing costs are going are to going be up. going up. Not, a di not an easy message to hear, but it's better to be gloomy than to be wrong. Absolutely. Justin Urquhart-Stewart there.